This, oh. this, this is, ex did you ever have any of these ones? Uh, no. Because this is exactly what I started with. Three machine, nine, 10. This is actually what I started editing. And it's funny, it just comes back straight away. <laughs> I've literally not touched it in about 20 years. Wow. What were you editing on? I mean, what, what kind of films? Well, the first thing I ever cut, actually, Joe Carter, Unstoppable Sex Machine. Oh, no. So it's a band, and I did their concert video, and then I realised that actually editing's quite easy. But I remember these. We used to have these at um, GHA when I worked there, which were doing corporates. Well, these are what Beta SX is. Did you have Essex? Um, yeah, well, we had actually both Umatic and VHS. But, but I definitely had B to SXs, but I'm wondering whether they were at, whether it was at that corporate company or um, one of the other offline facilities. Hang on, let's see if I can. There's a key there. Because you were offline, weren't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 that's true. But we did have. Um, oh, we online at the corporate company, GHA, but I can't remember exactly what gear we had. I didn't do it. I, right, it's going to take me a little while. I don't even know what I'm looking at there. That is... I'm, I'm not even sure what... This is terrible. I'm not even sure what I'm monitoring. Hold on. What's funny is the, the size of the screens as well. They're all enormous, aren't they? Compared... To, well, we still get those in the offline suite. I don't know if you have them. No. Well, I've might have been editing at home on my laptop for... <laughs> for quite some time. Because I'm still, so we still get some of these. They Do still, you? you know, some of the facility companies still have them. Yeah. So I'm just chucking in an SP. So we've got some sound coming from somewhere. I really, I mean, you've kind of put us on the spot here because I've never used this mixer. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but also I don't know the setup at all. So I'm kind of going, why is that playing? I'm not asking it to play. Is that and working out which is controlling what but I've um, stuck an SP tape into one of the machines so we've got an SX which the SX is we used at Big Brother and these are kind of like the, the poor man's version of the digi beta and then we've got the good old SP tape and I remember the SPs coming in because I don't think you've got one here but I used to work on one inch which is what I started oh, okay. off on, on the three machines and I was an assistant editor when the uh, SPs came in, um, and they were a revelation to us. It's all very, very <laughs> exciting. Um, it's so much easier. And I was a terrible assistant. I used to fall asleep all the time. I'd be reading the paper, and then people, all these, all the editors would be furious with me because they'd have to come up and sort it out themselves. <laughs> Let's see what we've got. So we've got. Okay, so player one on that monitor, player two on that monitor. Well, this says player two, but I think that's the, because I'm holding the, that's the record button. So that's the record monitor down. Player one, I can see, and then player two actually says there's a tape out on this one, you might, if you can see that down there. So basically, this isn't actually set up properly. I'd get an engine, this is where I call the engineers in. <laughs> so I can't do anything apart from, there's no caption generator, about the best I can manage would be to kind of try and see if I can do a mix through. We've got a key going up. And I can see if I can get a mix through to a colour background. There we go, that's about, oh, we can even do, there we go, beautiful uh -huh. white. So did you only use the 910? Oh no, I don't know. I've, I'm not one for remembering all the gear that I worked on, to be honest. I did, I, I've worked on, um, we just, I did, you know, quite a lot of tape to tape, that's all I remember. And, or, you know, just, it's that whole thing about the timing, like playing things and being able to preview them and then go for it and having to kind of be, make those decisions and sort of stick with them that we don't have to do now. We can just yeah. play around. I well, remember that sort of discipline. I, I, I quite liked it, actually. I did. I mean, it's a lot of fun. Because you were always, um, and then you just had to, sort of, people had to make their minds up. They didn't, they tried, they didn't shoot too much. You yeah, had to be really disciplined. It's the same with like the avids that I work on now. Um, basically, you know, just get in front of a machine and just get on with it, don't you? The, the, yeah. uh, at the time, I 
I just got used to whatever machine I had. And I, obviously, we had, I had the same equipment for three years. Um, As I say, this is what, I mean, I would do all-nighters on this. I was working all the time at that point. So I would be starting working through the day, and then I'd carry on working through the night doing other projects with other people. I was surviving on coffee and caffeine pills. <laughs> Not a way to... I had to stop caffeine, coffee for about two years because I became sort of too edgy in too many late-nighters. <laughs> Um, but it was with this. It was all with this, exactly this setup. Wow. I haven't touched the BVE 910, the Sony BVE 910, I swear, in 23 years. So, um, and it's like it was yesterday. I mean, I struggled to do some of it, to go back and go, I mean, all the edit list management, but I reckon, give me about an hour, and I'd almost be back to where I was. <laughs> But this is really simple. I mean, we used to have a much bigger one. The, the bigger version is the, the 9100, and that was quite full on. Um, and this is a tiny little mixer. So we'd have, a, you know, it would be probably about three times the size of this. Um, and we do multi-level stuff. So, you know, building yeah. layer upon layer. And that's all the stuff that you go, now, with an Avid, it's so much easier. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. So you said you were doing pop promos. Uh, we did pop videos. We did the biggest nightmare. We used to do the Italian football. Mm -hmm. And so with the Italian football, you'd be running three machines. So we'd have a record deck, probably DigiBeta. Yeah. Actually, maybe, no, BSP. Mm -hmm. And we would be using, you get four channels on the SP. Mm -hmm. And then we'd have to bounce the audio because we'd have to have voiceover, Atmos, the commentary, the sound effects from the football, and you'd be mixing all of these at the same time. Yeah. And you need to mix them through and obviously make it seamless, like yeah. you do on an Avid now. Um, but you've only got two machines to play with. And we'd have these, and we'd also have something called a bell box that we could lay off the audio onto. Yeah. Um, and you'd be running all of those at the same time. And it was a complete mind scramble <laughs> trying to keep track of it all and you'd be starting and stopping and doing it all over again it wasn't it was you're sort of pushing the equipment right to the very limit of what you could do yeah. and now it's the sort of thing you can do instantly on avid you don't even worry about it yeah it was a lot of fun but it was you couldn't come into work with a hangover why and i remember having one of these we uh, went off and worked uh, for mtv in the mtv music awards in stockholm i think it was mm -hmm. um and they'd set one of these up, but they never got it working properly, so we actually couldn't do any mixes. Every time you do a mix, you'd get a jump, um, so we could only cut every single time. It was like the most basic editing ever. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, but a mix can get you out of a jam. Uh, <laughs> well, it used to be yeah. able to anyway. <laughs> so I think online in those days, actually, you made a lot more changes in the online. Like, yeah. you know, now it'd be unheard of, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. To, to move, a, to, to change a frame. Because in those days, you kind of sort of set it out, and then in the online, you'd be going, oh, you know, we, we, I want a bit of graphics there, and I want to the dissolve massive, there. It wouldn't be frame accurate, would it? Um, well... They were close. Yeah. Um, that's the thing, I mean... Oh, the time, because I know the time code readers came in later, didn't they, when you'd get the EDL? Yes. Uh, Actually, that's oh. the other thing, of course. Yeah, we, we're exactly right. Edit decision right. list. <laughs> Wait, yeah, edit decision list. And once we, you'd get it, that's right. Often they do machine to machine edits and you just have a handwritten log. Yeah, that's and right. And th that's, that's, yes, that's how that's I started. Right. Burnt in time for, code. Yeah, burnt Forgot in about time burnt code. in time code. And then you'd be going through, which have you got on here? Yeah. Um, that's right, you'd go through and literally write every single yeah, shot down. I've forgotten all about that's that. That's exactly how I started because yeah. the EDL for the Carter um, concert video, all the time code had screwed up. And so there was no, I had to eye match every single shot. Oh, wow. Um, from the offline. And I went, oh, this is actually not as hard as it looks. Yeah. They sort of set me off as an assistant editor to go and do it. And I was like, I can do this. So, I mean, a lot of the stuff that I used to do, because this is more my field than yours, isn't it? Mm. Um, We'd be doing a lot more promo stuff, and you would have to be very, very careful about things. I mean, I, I remember specifically as an assistant editor, and I was doing the captions, and you know, assistant editor, you look after the machines, but I was also doing the caption generator, which was the A72 then. And I spelled independent wrong, and no one noticed until about two hours later when we were about five layers deep into a multi-layer effect and we had to go back and do the same, do it all over again. 
and the producer and the editor both had to go for a little walk and calm down. <laughs> you had to do it all over again. So, yeah, you had to be really, really careful. And of course, I'd still be careful. I still have to be double care doubly, still have to double check on how you'd spell independent now. <laughs> you're just like, okay. You've got a complex. <laughs> yeah, exactly, for that one word, you're like, I can't believe I got it wrong. And I pride myself on my spelling as well. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you go. But I, lo I love it. Oh, slow mixed to black. <laughs> no heart wipe. Oh, no, no heart wipe. It's so funny. Oh, and of course it's got chroma key on it. And that well. was the thing about the pop promos as well at the time, you know, really a uh, lot, oh. lot of effects. Yeah. Lot of simple, well. It's a shame I can't show you. It's like. Crude. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I've got so many of like all yeah, on the show reel. Transitions. Got, yeah, lots of transitions and trying to find any way of doing any effect you can. And masks. So you forget now, and I had to do this because again, I've, I built multi layer effects, but do you ever do, you do animat? Use the animator. No. So on Avid now, you can draw around anything you want and you can cut out any shape you want to. Yeah. We had this. We could do a square or a circle. Uh -huh. And that's all we could cut round. And then maybe chroma key if someone had shot it right. But even with the best technology, chroma key was a nightmare. Back like then. So yeah, you've got a choice between a square, you can go do a diamond. So a obviously diamond, you can have the image, the, uh, the second image playing in the square yeah, or exactly. the diamond. Yeah, exactly, you could have them both playing. Whatever. But I can change, there you go, and it's coming back straight away, and I can, it's incredible. But then, I, I mean, it's fairly, I think it's fairly obvious, but then maybe that it's border. not. Oh, you've changed the width of the border. Which, I can change the colour, I can put a softness on it, if you want one. Change the size of it, and let's put, let's see if I can work out colour on it. There we go, look at that, a lovely Yay. green. This is, what we, this is what we had to work with. So you put a colour in there if you were feeling really special. Because that was the other thing as well, wasn't it? Striping the tapes. Oh and, my God, yeah. And all of that. Yeah, yeah. and then that's, I mean, that's the assistant editor's job. And of course, we always had to keep a steady, when I was assistant editor. Yeah, like if you didn't have a tape that was striped and you needed one something. Yeah, you're in real trouble. Yeah. You're not very popular with the editor. And it's the wrong length. It needs to be the right so length. Basically, if the tape's not striped, I mean, people watching won't know that. If the tape's not striped, you couldn't record onto it. And so you have to record the tape all the way through to lay, lay time code all the way down the tape. Yeah. Um, and then the number of times you'd find someone that hadn't striped a tape, so the editor would be halfway through and then it would just crush out and everything would stop. Yeah, you get to a point and the, the tape had, had got no more black yeah, on it. It's exactly. called black when it's Yeah, uh, black and burst you'd have striped. to put on it. And you'd get there and then it'd be like, oh, mayhem, because <laughs> you, could, you could stripe it from there onwards well, you can and then the time code would be on, different. But and, everything uh, slows down. Now, it's possible to do it, but everything becomes much, much slower and you have a very, very grumpy editor. On the spot. Right, so first of all, let's see if the G, right, I'm going to see if a GPI works. So GPI stands for General Purpose Interface, as I recall, and you can use a GPI to set one to trigger off the mixer to go to, to fire a wipe or a, a mix, as we call it. Um, you can see that's not quite working. It's doing something weird there, but let's see if we can get one going. So I guess you can either do it automatically could yeah, you you can, or you do it manually. You do it manually, but you generally use the GPIs because... Uh, sorry, this is a bit boring for you because this is, <laughs> this is my... But we'll move on. I'm trying to remember. But, um, Mark an endpoint at 2.30. Okay. And then let's see if I can get this to go. GPI, F1, GPI and record in. Yep, it's there. And enter. So the GPI should work. So the first thing I'm going to do is just preview it and see if... Oh. Yeah, that would help, wouldn't it? Yeah, classic. Mark an endpoint also on the source deck. That is amazing, isn't it? Actually, to be fair, and if I think about it, I was using, um, and you used to whack the keys as well. You always <laughs> whack them. You do it with passion. Um, yeah. And it always, people always used to sort of seem like they're working really hard when they were really bashing. Yeah, well, there was always the, the classic one of uh, when the directors would ask you to change something and you didn't want to change it. So you'd type in really fast, one frame forward, one frame back. So you haven't done anything. <laughs> um, and there we go. So we've got that going. So we've got an edit, but we haven't got the GPI working. Now, is the GPI set up? There is a way of getting it to just to test to see if the GPI is working. I think, I'm not sure on this one. This is so, oh God, it's grim. 
amazing to look back on this. I don't think the GPIs, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try a GPI on all of them. See if any of them do it. Record in, yes, enter. GPI 3, record in, enter. GPI 4, record in, enter. And let's see if I can get anything to work. Is this going to preview or is it going to do it? Just, oh, you think just go for it, do you? No, right. well, Hit the record button. No, Live not... dangerously. Yeah, why not? So, and of course, this is the other thing. You have to wait every single time for a run up. Yeah. So, no GPI seems to be running. I've got a feeling that probably means they're not connected anywhere. So, we can't really do a pre read, I don't think. Well, the, actually, we could just do it manually. So, if we. Yeah, we can do the really horrible wipe. Excellent. All right, we're going for record. Okay. Should we do? It's bringing back memories actually, just seeing things um, like pre-roll. <laughs> it's making me nervous. And then wipe through. It's a thing of beauty. Oh. Oh, what happened? That. That's, Is that just the end of the edit? No, that's um, that's exactly what I thought. It's exactly the problem we had in when I was in. Um, uh, Stockholm. The blackened burst, the, what is it, the reference isn't quite there and it probably means that, so it will go through and then it's Oh, play about what you did then. So there, see it crashes out there. Mm. That is because we've lost reference somewhere. One of the machines isn't quite locked to the other one and we had this and we could never get it working in Stockholm so we just gave up that's why we stuck with cuts all the time oh, so go. go through it's beautiful and then crunch oh <laughs> uh, yeah and all anything like that drop out yeah it's not actually a dropout oh isn't it, it? Oh, it's right. this is where but it looks like a drop it's yeah. the same sort of it thing lo of... It, it looks exactly like it oh. but it's actually because somewhere the machines aren't referenced okay uh -huh. so umatic this umatic is... machines yay so this should be you isn't it as an offline were you using umatic yeah we did use umatic but oh my god it looks it looks they look more complicated than i remember I thought yeah. your magic was really simple. It's like you've got all these. Oh God! So oh yeah, yeah tracking. Don't touch anything. Tracking. Do you remember track? I mean, they used to do it on VHSs, but you had to have it with the umatics as well. Oh, let's have a look at the tapes. They're so big. Oh, the boxes. Look at this. Okay, minus four du on these meters is equivalent to the oh, yeah, BBC so lineup level. Oh yeah, these buttons. So. Oh God, yeah, that plastic thing you pull out to stop them. You, stop so you, anyone recording over yeah. it. Highly, highly technical. Uh. Auto tracking, manual tracking, and I seem to remember that they wouldn't play, yes, unless oh, they're yeah. out of remote. So you'd be locked if you're in remote. Uh, let's have a look. <laughs> this controller's <laughs> tempting. I'm looking at I like one. the fact that it's got two rather than your one Your wheel. single one, yeah, oh, exactly. Look, I remember pressing. Oh, hang on. So oh. one will be play and one will be record. I think the recorder. Hold on a sec. Oh, oh I don't have, have to got, stop have it. Have you got sound? Have you bro You've broken it. Error. All right, is it this one? All right, hold on a sec. Oh, hang on, I've, really ta I've taken you out of remote. There you go. Uh, okay. Oh, it's this one, look. Oh, it feels so good. <laughs> Spooling through tapes. Don't have to do that anymore. Oh. All right, and then this one's not going in. No, no, okay. that one's dead. So this would be the... That probably is a record deck, isn't it? Yeah, this is a recorder. So... so OK. Anyway, so there's just this great feeling of... I sort of stop that. I always miss that. I still miss it in a way with Avid, that you haven't got, like, a scroll wheel that you can do through down the timeline. Yeah. It's there was never one at a time, wasn't there? Yeah, it never worked as well, though. No. There's a beauty to those scroll wheels. Oh, I like the sound of it as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's much better than doing fast forward on Avid, which just goes, yeah, it just... So you've got stop, rewind. It's rewinding, you can't see it. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's a... But if you could see it, it'd be scratching the tape. Like there's, no, there's a way. There you go. If you switch it to... OK. Oh, there we go. But it wasn't remember. that... That was... Wasn't good, though, was it? Because it was supposed to be taking... Like, Probably knocking the, the oxide itself. off the tape, yeah. yeah. So... But still, we'll do it now. Um, there's a lot of tapes. <laughs> I just love it. I wish somebody was talking so we could hear the... Let's see. Let's see what we've got. I'm going to go forward. I don't think it goes fast if you press it twice. I can't remember. 
I seem to remember that as well from somewhere. Let's Isn't see. that on the DigiVita machines? I don't know. But that's once. It's just going to get faster and faster. Okay. So, yeah. And then... You see, I... So, okay, so you'd, you'd find your place on your... Oh, so you got on your record. So this, it's a bit. It's similar to the the nine ten. So you got play in, record in, and play out and record out. And so you'd mark in. But you've probably did you have the did you ever use this one? No, I don't think so. But I know that yeah. So you'd have your well, you'd find wherever it was you want your new shot to go yeah. in. Yeah. I'm just gonna see if I can find anyone talking. But you'd you'd um, yeah find the place where you want your new shot to come in on here. So I want the new shot to come in there. Let me just play it. Ooh. Oh, there's a play. Um, I'm trying to remember if you would just mark in. Where's the mark in there? I think it's these. So you've got a, uh, well, there's an in and there's an out. Because you've been operating, oh, yeah. I've had a chance I to look my over. Glasses. I didn't need my glasses then. Right, so this is in, I want to go in there. Okay. No, I want to go in there. That's the recording, yeah, that should be it. Uh, and then I'd turn this, play this side, which would, that would show me the incoming shot. Mm. I'd put that wherever I wanted. And then I could do an auto edit. Can I do a preview? Yeah, preview. Try it, see what happens. In my room. Maybe if we go to, because it's going, oh, hang on. What are you going to do? Are you going to do an assemble? Oh, right. Oh, <laughs> are yeah. you going to insert? Oh, yeah, I'd forgotten about all that. Oh, so you could, if you weren't on a stripe tape, you could do an assemble mm -hmm. edit. Theoretically, yes, you could. Um, but it's just a lot slower. And if you go past it, if you go past your assemble out, then every time you'd have to rewind back to the the other side of it again it just slows everything down yeah but that should try where's your preview oh, is it there preview button no so this is when we'd have when our burnt in time codes would come into yeah you'd have burnt in time so codes. on the umatic you'd be doing your like first your you'd be working out the edit making your editorial decisions and you'd have your the little time code on there and yeah. then you would go straight into jog look at that again it's like muscle memory straight yeah. into jog mode and you click and you're there and then you would list your time codes after you've done this. Oh, I love it. The jog things, it's, it's, it's a thing of beauty. Those jog wheels, they really yeah. are. They're just, and again, as you say, like straight to that, time. the jog yeah. and the shuttle, and, the jog, and it's just great. And it works really, really well. It's actually still better than Avid. But uh, no one's ever sort of... See, that's one at each frame, not... Yeah. But I just love the fact that you're just going, you're going, you're moving that, and the time codes aren't bearing any relation to it. They're close. No. About a second out. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I must have worked on Umatic for, a, well, I was going between Umatic and VHS as a freelancer for a few years, quite a few years. Um, when I was producing and directing, let me see, uh, 82, I think, 82, 85, 6 or 7, 8, 8, 9, I don't know, yeah, probably, I don't know, five years or something. But not one of these, because I, we, again, no. where I used to work, they had a pneumatic machine to machine, but it wasn't this one, it was much simpler. Yeah. This looks really, this is like high end pneumatic machine. 